Okay. So, welcome once again. Today, on this day 13 Akabal, as we approach the summer solstice, we are finishing off the Tresena of bats and we're going into the Tresena of cat. Okay, and so this Tresena is the Tresena which is going to contain the day Washiki bats. It's a very, very important Tresena. And well, what's it all about? Well, we can start off by understanding a bit more about the properties of the Nawal cat, okay? So the Nawal cat, the Nawal of the net, the Nawal of gathering, the Nawal of harvest, can also be seen as the Nawal of planting. One of the reasons for this is that if you look at the glyph for cat, sometimes you can see it, it looks like, like a little dip with a little seed that's about to be dropped into it, okay? And so, of course, you're planting something and then you're receiving it. Now, on one ach, I planted some maize and I would say that my first cob of corn is going to be ready tomorrow on one cat. And I thought that was kind of interesting because one ach being the new maize and then harvesting it on one cat. But this thing with the, the seed is the multiplication you plant one kernel of maize, you're going to get two ears of maize back. Now, how many corners or how many corns are on an ear? Maybe 600 or something like that. So you get you plant one, you get 1,200 back. That's what cat is about. It's all about multiplication. It is, or it can be seen as the Nawal of the merchant. You take one bag of avocados to the market, you buy two bags of oranges with it. You take two bags of oranges to the next market and so on and so on, getting um, stronger and stronger as you go on. So cat can be about filling our net. It can be about taking our harvest. But what happens when we hold on to things for too long? They become our burden, right? We can't move forward because we've got this heavy net on us. And so cat also gives us an opportunity to say, do I really want to carry that in my net anymore, or shall I get let go of it? You know, there's also a way of seeing it where, the, where cat can be seen as the womb, because it's the net, it's the bag where the cells multiply. We've had our immaculate conception on 13 Akhabal, and the next day is one cat, and so it's the beginning of that process of gestation as well. And so, I always associate the Nawal Kat with this idea, you know, the recycle symbol where you've got the two arrows that follow each other around in a circle. It's like catch and release. You gather into your net, and then at some point you have to release from your net. You have to keep it moving. That's what cat's all about. Yes, you can multiply, but only to a certain point, because once you've multiplied to a certain point, you then become burdened. And so it's releasing the burden. However, in recent weeks, 20 days ago, we went through seven cat, right? And that was you know, finally releasing the burden. And so theoretically now, if we released our burdens, we should have the empty net. We should be ready to, to bring something in again. And that's what we're here to do. As I said, we've got that eight bats in the middle. The, the gestation day is right in the middle of it. So it can be very much about planting a new seed of something that you wish to multiply. It could also be seen very much as um, letting, you know, the, like you've let go of everything, you've got your empty net, you're ready to go forward. And so this is kind of like what you've got going on as an emotional feel through the whole Tresena of Cat. It's about gathering things together, maybe gathering the resources that you need in order to multiply, in order to prosper. And I know that people kind of get a bit upset when I talk about prosperity because they think of it maybe in a different way. I'm talking about thriving. I'm talking about planting enough so that everybody has full bellies and all that kind of thing. Okay? So planting something new is a great thing to do on a cat day. But also gathering new resources, gathering new ideas together. That's what it's all about. Okay? So one cat. We're starting with this empty net. We've released on the seven cat. Now we've got this empty net. We've got this empty bag to bring our resources into. Okay? So what do you need to gather? 
Now, the number one, again, I see like a seed. And so we've got a seed being planted on a, you know, kind of like a seeding day. It can be very potent to go out and plant some seeds tomorrow. But the number one is pure potential. And so it's also, it can be a bit uncertain because it's only potential. Like an egg where we're not sure what it's going to become. Might not even be sure what a seed is going to become. But, you know, all of these trees that are behind me, they all came from seeds. And that little seed contained all the genetic information to make it grow into that tree and give flowers and give fruit and do all of those kind of things. But what did it need? It needed fertilizer. It needed water. It needed sunlight in order to grow. So going back to the day of cat, if we're looking at one cat, we could say that this is a day when you have the potential to bring things into your net but maybe it's also a day to ask for the advice of what to pack for the journey. You know, have a look. You know, it's like it might be a good day to plant seeds, but what seeds are you going to plant? Because maybe it's not the right time to plant those particular types of seeds. And those could be physical seeds. They could also be metaphorical seeds as well. So the one day needs a little bit of advice. It needs a little bit of um, help. It needs a little bit of fertilizer. So it's a great day to go and ask your friends, go and ask your family, okay, what should I be planting today? What should I be carrying in my net, in your opinion? How can I get some, um, some fertilizer for what I'm planting into the ground, for what I'm bringing into my net today? From one cat, we're then going to go into two can. So can, wisdom and power. Can, the Nawal of the serpent, the Nawal of teachers, the Nawal of illusions as well. Okay, it's our creative energy. We often see kind of like on some some of the codices where we have the Nawal Khan or the glyph for Khan sitting right over what we would probably refer to as the, sh the sacral chakra or Hara, the seat of our creative essence. Okay, and so I sometimes see Khan. I mean, we talk about it being like the life force energy, the Kayapa, the you know the key energy that we could talk about as well. And so here it is, a little bit of life force, a spark of life force going into that seed that you just put into the net, going into that seed that you just planted. It's also using the wisdom. And we could see with the number two, the number two representing duality. The number two can be very much about seeing things in black and white, very, very um, uh, dualistic in nature. Now, can itself... That energy really needs training. You know, it's kind of like whenever we're using our life force energy, whenever we're using our key or whatever, we can be destructive with it as well as creative with it. But it's our choice, it's our training that guides us as to how we're going to use it. And so this is the choice of how you use your energy. Will you share your wisdom and empower those around you? Or... Will you use what you've learned and will you use your energy to create an illusion? It's up to you. I mean, it's kind of like at the end of the day, we will reap the consequences of our own actions. And so it's not necessarily judgmental on anything in that kind of way, but it's a day of choices. It's also, it could become very black and white to see through illusions. Okay, Things might be brought into a stark reality on a toucan day. We say, right, okay, well, there's reality, and there's what I was told was reality. Well, hang on, they're not the same. And so toucan can very much be a day of revolution and revelation, okay? From toucan, we're then going to go into three kame. So kame, the spiritual transformation, kame, death, kame, the ancestors. And here we see it with the number three, and the number three being the inner world, okay? The number three representing the home. So for three Kame, we're very much looking at kind of like transformation occurring within the home. It's about your transformation that's going on within yourself, okay? Not looking outside for the answers and that kind of thing. Now, Kame can also be seen as like facing our fears. I mean, that's the way that we generally transform anyway, right? And the Lord's Kame, they're 
you know, dwelling in Shibalba, Shibalba being the place of fight, fly, <coughs> excuse me, the place of fright, the place of fear, okay? So you enter Shibalba to go and face your demons, as it were. Well, if we're talking about the number three, and we're looking at the inner world, then this is about the transformation of your inner fears, the transformation of your inner demons. So it's a great time to be taking some moments of solitude, to be taking some retreat space, some re retreat time and that, and kind of like going within to see what fears you still have remaining within you that you need to kind of like overcome in order to transform so that that seed that you planted on one cat has proper fertile ground to grow in. Okay, from three kame, we're then going to go to four kiech. Okay, so kiech, the nawal of the wilderness, the nawal of the spiritual leader, the nawal of the deer. It's the nawal of the trees and the mountains. It's what connects us to the wilderness and the natural world, and that's where we gain our strength. And the number four, well. I was talking about four earlier and saying it's very physical, it's very grounded, it's a great foundation, it's hugely stable, very, very down to earth. And it very much represents the physical or material realm. And so this is a great day to literally go out physically into the wilderness. You know, if you're looking for strength, if you're looking for stability, if you're looking to ground your ideas for what you might want to become or your leadership or your strength and, and regain that, then Forkeh is the day to go and interact in a physical way with the wilderness. Take a walk up into the mountains, interact with the trees, interact with the animals because this will help to bring that into balance because balance is very important on Kech days. Kech can be really headstrong. Kech can be sometimes stubborn as well. And when we look at nature, you know, I, th I go back once again to, well, I saw another one the other day, a tree growing out of a rock. And that seed fell onto the rock, and obviously it germinated, and then the roots found their way through the cracks in the rock. They didn't split the rock. I mean, they might expand it a little bit or something like that. But really, it was like finding a way to move through the rock, to be in harmony with the rock, but still having the determination to grow. And that, for me, is, is one of the key essences for Kech Day, is to go and observe nature and see how, you know, it's like you go and look at abandoned buildings or, or like old abandoned, I don't know, school sites, air bases or whatever. You see nature taking over again. It will always find a way to grow back. But it's not daft, and it doesn't try and push its way through solid concrete. That's like banging your head against a brick wall, and sometimes kech can take us down that route. So in order to really come into true balance and to take the strength out of it, then that's where we can go and take a walk in the woods. That's when we can go and take a walk in the mountains and bring it into some kind of stable and material reality. From four kech, we're then going to go into five anil. Now, anil, also sometimes called the seed as well, um, anil, also about like the harvest, it's about the ripening. And for me, you know, an means yellow, il means having the properties of. So when you put it on a suffix like that, it's like yellowing, which is what the corn is doing. What my corn and my cobra is doing right now is turning yellow. And you know how it is? Well, I know how it is. I guess that you guys do as well. I've been growing my corn since one ach. I'm really excited. I'm watching it getting taller by the day. I'm waiting for that moment when I can pick that elote and I can put it in the water and I can have like proper fresh organic corn on the cob from my own garden. I'm really excited about it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel back the layers and I'm going to see if the corn is yellow enough because that's anil. That's what it's all about. It's about the yellowing of the corn. Okay, so we are the people of the corn as well. The fourth world, the fourth age of time. This is the time of the corn people. It began 13th of August, 3114 BC, as I was saying about earlier. 
Okay, so this is about our own ripening as much as the ripening of the corn. It's about our coming to maturity. It's about bringing things to their natural uh, point of ripeness. And here it's combined with the number five. Okay, so the number five, the number of work, work, the application of energy to a system. So this is about putting your effort, putting your energy into maturing and bringing to maturity what it is that you want to mature. Whether that is yourself, whether that is the idea, the seed that you've been planting on one cat and the cat tracena, like five, and Neil, it's the time to you know, really put some work into saying, right, okay, what do I need to add to this if I want to take it to its maturity, if I want it to achieve its full yellowness, its full brightness? So five, and Neil, is a great day for doing that. And the five day will, for me, this is always going to pay off, okay? When you put your energy in, you will find it multiplied. So it's always worth... If you've got a project or a plan and you need to push it along a bit, you want to take it somewhere further, five anil is the day to do it. From five anil, we go into six toch. So I also would say about anil, anil is the day, let's say, when we get, we take our payment, okay? We take our harvest. We've been toiling in the field for 105 days, growing our maize or whatever it might be. And now we can finally take those cobs that we harvested on, on cat or ganil or whatever. We take them to market. We get paid for them. But along the line, we've got to give something back. And that's what we do on the toch day. That's where we make our offering. We give thanks for the harvest. We give thanks for what's come to us. And we can do that in many ways. Now, maybe we're going to make a fire ceremony. Maybe we're going to make our offerings in that way. Maybe we're going to make a donation to a charity like Odim or somebody like that that's helping the communities here to develop, to, to, you know, to work and to be healthier and that kind of thing. Or maybe we're going to do some other thing. But it's about a day of giving. Maybe you're going to go and pick up some trash around your neighborhood or look after some people or whatever it is. That's what Toch is all about. It's about putting our energy, making a little sacrifice, giving something back to give thanks for what you've received. And so the number six is about family. Okay? It's about, um, we could see it as a day of ultimate stability. Now, I'm going to introduce, a, well, obviously a non-Mayan concept and talk about karma for a bit. And, you know, you kind of like think that karma is, you know, that thing that slaps you when you've done something bad or something like that. But what about if we saw it like a signpost? Okay. Often I think it's like a, bed, a, bread crumb, a breadcrumb trail which is left when we're on the right track, right? We get the little, you know, the little, we get the little pieces of cheese as we're going through the right um, plants of the maze. So that's one way of looking at it, and probably a more positive way of looking at it. But sometimes we've forgotten what we're supposed to be doing here. And we're receiving, and we're receiving, and we're receiving, and we're just like, oh, well, it's my right to receive, and I'm really happy to receive, and all that kind of thing. And we forget that it's also up to us to pay back, to give something back each time that we receive something. And so, like, as we've gone through... Toch is the time to give back of our energy in whatever way that might take. Now, if we're talking about the number six representing the number of family, this can also be a good time to be giving something back, showing some appreciation for your family and for what they've, you know, what they've given to you growing up or what they've, how they've supported you through your life. Six Toch is a great day to be coming into balance, to remember to make an offering to give something back, to do something nice for your mum, your dad, or whatever, and give thanks for what they've given to support you. From six toch, we then go to seven C. So the number seven, the number at the top of the pyramid, okay? The number of endings, the number of finality. So it can also be seen as the number of balance and choices and decisions. But 7C, for me, when we're standing on top of the pyramid with C, and C is our loyal, faithful guide. 
it's our dog that's guided us to the mountain. Maybe it's our spiritual guide. T, our loyal, loving companion, has taken us to that point. But it's taken us through all 260 days. And finally, we come to the top of the mountain. And the guide is old. The guide is kind of like, he's done his job. He's ready for a bit of a rest now. Okay, and so it's kind of like it's taking us to this pinnacle, and it could also be death. Okay, now one of the other things is that when we're on top of that mountain, when we're on top of that pyramid, that's the point when we can see in all directions. And when we can see in all directions, especially from up high, that's when we've got all of the best options available to us. Well, we can see that, and that looks good, and we can see that, and that looks good, and we can see that, and that looks good. And so we could say that there's a lot on offer. And one of the other things that Z also represents is the vices. And so this could very much be a day of temptations. Because you might see this, and oh, that looks good. Oh, look at that. Over, oh, I like that over there. But you also see where your faith is, where your path is supposed to go. Okay? And so you may have a lot of options. Let's say, um, how can we say, put in front of you on 7C. And it's going to be very much your decision as to which one you choose. Because one of them takes you forward to the initiation day on eight bats, and the other one, well, it might take you off your path for a little while or something like that. It's up to you how you choose to manage your life. But like, just be aware that on 7C, this might be something that comes up. Be aware of, like, you know, okay, it looks good, it feels good, but where is it coming from? Is this really taking me forward, or is this something which is taking me off my path? We then come to Washakim bats, of course. The initiation day, eight bats, the day of the wholeness of the weaving, bringing together the old and the new in one place to create something beautiful. That's what it's, for me, one of the things it's all about. That's why it's initiation day. That's the passing of the flame from the teacher to the student, from, from the initiator to the initiatee. That's where we're going with it, okay? And so it is, of course, a very, very potent day of creation. It's a great day to be working to bring together. Maybe you had some old creative project and you've got some new creative project. This is a day to bring it all together, to also make ceremony. Because eight days, for me, they're very much the ceremonial days as well. And so eight bats is a great day to be making ceremony and giving thanks for your creativity for your connection to that part of you, that part of the divine, that enables you to express the beauty that you have inside of you out into the world, whether it's through works of art, whether it's through painting, whether it's through your voice, if you're a dancer, maybe it's through your moves, however it might be, we all have a creative expression. And Eight Bats gives us an opportunity to give thanks for it. Eight Bats gives us an opportunity to make a fire and... Also, it's a, like re reaffirmation of our connection to it as well. You know, it's like sometimes the more, well, all the time, the more attention that we pay to something, the greater it grows, right? And so, like when we put or choose to put our attention, our love, when we, when choose, we choose to acknowledge, acknowledge something, when we choose to give thanks for um, what we've received with regards to creativity, then that's a time when our creativity will also be enhanced and renewed. And so making your ceremony on eight bats is a great thing to do to be um, working with that. Okay? So anybody in creative arts, definitely it's time to give a little back and make your ceremony and give thanks for it. From eight bats, we then go into nine E. Eh. Now, again... Okay, we could say that this, this Bats Trasena has some very fortunate days in it, and if you're going to travel, then Nine Ech might be one of the most interesting ones to be traveling on. Nine Ech, well, Nine can represent the feminine, but it can also represent the life. It's all about life. It's the nine lunations that we spend in the womb. It's all about new life. Okay, and Ech, the path, the journey. And so it's literally about your life path. You know how I was saying when you're standing on the mountain with a dog and you're seeing all these kind of different things? It's like, where's your life path taking you? 
Okay, you go through the initiation, and then your path can go wherever you want. So if you've got some travel to do, 9e would be a great day to be doing it. Okay, it can also be not just about physical travel, but about your life path. Okay, if you're looking to find your life path, if you're wondering where your life path is supposed to be taking you, 9e is the day to look for answers for this. If you got a bit lost on your path, maybe, or something like that, then be open on 9e. And as I said, when it comes to travel, 9e has to be one of the best days of all to make a journey. From 9e, we'll then go to 10 ach, okay? So ach is all about the home. Ach is the staff, it's the spinal column. Everybody sits up straight when I say spinal column, right? <laughs> and it is about the, the, the benevolent father within the home. It's a great day to be giving thanks for the roof over your head. It's a great day to be giving thanks for the food on the table, for the harmony in your community, for the harmony in your home, and all of that kind of thing. It's also a day of leaders. It's a day of leadership. And it's a day to step up and stand up for what is right. Stand up for what brings harmony. And sometimes that's difficult, right? Because sometimes standing up for what brings harmony is kind of like that's not necessarily the popular thing, right? When you're calling something out, when you've got the spinal column, the backbone, to stand up and say, well, actually, sorry, I know that you'll like it, but I don't think it's right. It doesn't grow the community. It doesn't bring balance, okay? So it brings that form of leadership out. It's about taking responsibility and standing up and being a true leader. And here we see it with the number 10. The two hands coming together, it's about agreements. It's about community. It's about society. And so Ten Ach is a massively powerful day for creating agreements within society, agreements between leaders, for standing up and everybody kind of like getting their best aspect out there, looking at what will be best for the community and making our agreements around it. It could be a good day to shake hands on a new home as well, I suppose. But Ten Ach... As I say, powerful day, very balanced day, but also kind of like looking as kind of like what agreements can we make that are going to bring greater harmony to our home and society. From 10 Ach, we then go into 11 Ish. And so Ish, the Jaguar, Ish, the temples, the sacred, the energy of the mother. And, you know, we could say, well, the sacred is all around us. Our world is sacred. Our earth is sacred. Everything is. And we could also say that that's us as well. It's within us, right? Eleven-ish may be a great day to identify all of those kind of things. Because the eleven, you know, sometimes we're going to talk about it being directionless. It's not exactly directionless. It's, it kind of like knows where it's going at the time when it's going there. It just it didn't know where it was going when it was here. It didn't know that it was going to end up there because it's gone through a few turns on the way. But what does going through those turns bring? Well, it brings a great deal of creativity. Because if you're just following the straight path that leads you from A to B, then you're not really learning anything. It's just straightforward. When you start taking the scenic route, that's when you get more creative. So it might not necessarily be an immediate response, but... It's something which is going to fall into place later on. as to why you had to take that route that took you all round the houses rather than going straight there. Because the experiences that you had here, 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 and here were the things which actually developed it in the end. And here with the Nawal Ish. Well, the Nawal Ish, as I said, is about appreciating the sacred, appreciating Mother Earth. It's also about the magic that we hold our ability to manifest things, to ask Mother Earth for what we need for our families, to ask Mother Earth for what we need for our communities, to defend Mother Earth in the way that we need to as well. And so here we see that there are many possibilities, many opportunities on the 11 each day. And it's like maybe we'll be following that for a while and then maybe we'll be following that for a while. And we won't understand how that is related to that until later on down the line when it starts to come together. So 11 days, I think, are days 
just to leave yourself a little bit open to changes of plan, changes of possibilities and that kind of thing. But everything working around Mother Earth and the sacred on the Ish day. From 11 Ish, we're then going into 12 Tzikin. So Tzikin, the vision, the visionary, right? Tzikin, the bird that flies up high and that can see everything from afar that can see through not just space, but also through, see through time. That's why they're a visionary. They can see what our grandchildren need. They want to bring that into the world. That's what Making we call sure visionary. Right? thrives. So, 12 Tzikin. What does the number 12 represent? Well, the number 12, that can be seen as representing all of our life experiences, yeah? For me, the number 12 is a bit like writing an autobiography. It's like writing everything down. Oh, yeah, you know, when I was five, this happened. When I was 10, that happened or whatever. Going through all of those life experiences that formed us. When we combine it with Tzikin, it's the life experiences that form our vision for the future. It could also be seen as using our life vision you know using our life experience to guide that vision but it can also be seen as our life's vision that everything has been leading us to that one moment where suddenly we get the vision it's like that's what my life purpose is or something like that because we've compiled enough information i just suddenly got this idea about standing on top of these books at your autobiography being able to see over the wall as to what your life's vision is going to be okay so 12 Tzikin is a great day to be asking for that. What's my vision? Asking yourself for it. Like going back through your journals, going, having a life review and saying, right, okay, but what vision is driving me forward? Where do I want to see myself in five years, 10 years, 20 years, wherever it might be? And using, let's say, the perspective of what has gone on before your life experience to understand where you might be going next. And then finally, we're going to end up with 13 Achmach. So, Achmach, the Nawal of forgiveness. Achmach, the Nawal of the human. They say that when we were created, we could see through space and time. And then we had our perceptions smoked so that we could no longer see everything around us. And then we became human, and then we started making mistakes, and we started falling over, because that's what we're supposed to do. Learn from our experiences of picking ourselves back up off the ground and getting on with things. And part of that is also about forgiveness. Part of that is also kind of like accepting that we, need, we might need forgiveness, and we might need to forgive others as we go through our lives. That's the way that humans work, right? We're not perfect. If we were, it'd be kind of boring, in a way. Um, but so we also recognize the ancestors and their part in that, especially on 13 Achmach, because Achmach can represent our ancestors, and 13 can also represent our ancestors. And so we have those things going on. We could see 13 Achmach as ancestral forgiveness. Okay? Now, we're all here doing what we do being the best people that we can be, okay? And sometimes our ancestors might have done things that now if we were to look back on it, we might say, blimey, I don't think that was necessarily what I would do now or that would not be acceptable now or however it might be. But in their time, that was the norm, okay? I'm not apologizing for anybody. I'm not being an apologist for anything. But there's also something where maybe we're here also to work off that karma, work off that burden, make amends for what has gone on in the past. And so it is ancestral forgiveness to be working, doing our work, hopefully working in the right way or something along that kind of line, to make up for what we couldn't change because it's part of our heritage. We didn't, you know, we came into this with like, oh, oh, new DNA, great, oh. Oh, it's got that burden with it. Oh, thanks. Okay. Well, here's where you have the opportunity to make amends for it. Okay. And so if there is something in your family history that may need forgiving, then 13 Achmach is a great day to do it. It can also be seen as embracing everything that there is to be human. 
okay? Because Achmach is also one of these days where we recognize, look, I'm human, you're human, we enjoy being human, okay? And the 13 is going to make that a very powerful day. 13 Achmach might not necessarily be the day on which to make your mission critical um, things happen, okay? Because Achmach, things don't always go according to plan, okay? Forgiveness, right? Forgiveness happens when things don't go according to plan. You know, like I said, if you're going to travel, travel on 9 Ech. Maybe not 13 Achmach, because maybe your bags are going to turn up two weeks later, or maybe your flight gets delayed, or, or however that might be. Because it's forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. And maybe you've said, well, you know what, I know it's Nachmach day, but I've crossed all the T's and I've dotted all the I's and everything's really precise. But everybody around you is also experiencing the Achmach day. So just because you've got it right doesn't mean somebody else might not have it as right as you do. So as I say, enjoy it for what it is. Make your forgiveness ceremonies. Maybe it's also a day to ask forgiveness from your ancestors, because maybe your ancestors also had a different idea of what we should be doing now. And so 13 Achmach is a day to say, look, I'm sorry, but this is the me, this is the way I'm doing it, and I've got a good heart, and I hope I'm doing the right thing, and all that kind of thing. Um, but also enjoy being a human on 13 Achmach. Okay? Because that's what we're here to be. Okay? So thank you all. That's the Tresena of Kat. And I'll be back in 13 days' time to talk about the Tresena of Noch. Thank you.